Welcome to another spirit filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well. I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted unto you, and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. So the limitation of one stream is covered by the availability of another. Now watch this. I want to teach you something about the benefit of multiple streams of income. Write two words down. One, cash flow. Please, quickly, let's save time. We have to finish um, what we have. One, cash flow. Number two, write capital projects. One, cash flow. Two, capital projects you are not listen you are not truly financially free if there is no structure around your life to deal with these things watch this cash flow talks of the money that keeps coming consistently to be able to meet your immediate needs and your expenditure is that true capital projects or the money the income for capital project talks about the resource the financial resources that you will need for all the capital projects you have building you know school fees of your children and and all of that savings and so on and so forth now watch this our parents were taught so much about long-term projects so they bought land right they have cattle they have goats they have a lot of things that can meet long-term projects but they did not make arrangements for cash flow so you can see a man that owns 10 houses but he cannot produce 10 naira to take his child to the hospital under emergency you will think the man is stingy because you that's how many of our parents many of us now think our parents are giving some other people money they may not necessarily be doing that they are just financially illiterate and they are suffering the consequence for it so they do not they didn't prepare for today they were focusing so much on tomorrow they forgot that it's until you are alive today that you can meet tomorrow are you getting that now so they forgot that there will be needs how many houses have you gone to that you know the people are rich and sincerely they cannot bring out 1000 naira to go and buy chicken somewhere and just come and prepare it because the man is broke he may say, I don't have money. You think he's joking, but truly, truly, there is nothing. That's a poor financial life. Yet he has land. Right? Yes, he has resources. Who owns this container? He's the person. Who owns this Coca-Cola depot? He's the person, but there's no provision for this. Now, the trouble is, in a bit to remedy that, the younger generation, our generation, has focused entirely on cash flow to get money to always be in your pocket. And we're forgotten about tomorrow you see the mistake so i need money now i want to buy the watch of twenty thousand now i want to buy the trouser now so you see somebody and say man this guy is rich the watch of twenty thousand shoe of 15 or twenty thousand you are wearing a suit of this you calculate everything on him and he's standing he's wearing two hundred thousand and you are beguiled to think he's very rich still everything he's wearing and he becomes a beggar instantly because he's not preparing for tomorrow are you getting what i'm saying so financial literacy is the ability to keep that balance such that you can eat today you can live well today and then at the same time prepare for tomorrow there are many of our parents you will start enjoying their money when they are eight years at eight years the project they started 20 years will now come to fruition but at that time they are too old they can't do anything they would die and leave it for uncles who will swear that they will charm you if you don't leave that money alone and you will quietly just leave are you seeing that now and then we the younger generation are so obsessed i'm amazed to see the way our generation is so obsessed about producing instant results watch people that graduate everybody wants to show i'm working i now bought a car a bmw and um, I don't I no longer use the road I now fly I fly I fly around I'm flying to this place I'm flying to that place and then you carry your phone and say this is this is iPhone 
iPhone what? iPhone 6. Have you seen the speed of the internet and so on and so forth? And then we use this to lie to ourselves that it means we are rich. That's why every rich man will look at every small boy just behaving and nod his head say this guy is about to regret it unfortunately most of our sisters have been trained to identify those kind of people and define them as being rich so you come back and say is that brother that asked me and they say which one the poor one or the rich one and then you say the rich one meaning the one that held that phone the one that the, the watch or the shoes and all these were glittering you, are, you will be in big error because if you neglect today you will die today and never meet tomorrow and if you concentrate just on today you will enjoy today if you wear the cloth you should wear tomorrow today you walk naked tomorrow if you eat the food you should eat tomorrow today get set for hunger are you getting what i'm saying so my goal in the teaching tonight is to be able to help you structure your financial life such that you will be able to at least have something to live by and then prepare greatly for the future. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for wisdom. The key to activating multiple streams of income. Write this down. You do not activate the stream just by blindly starting up many businesses. Now, I listen to business people a lot. And I've had the privilege to be and speak in a few conferences. But the problem here, watch this. For many people, the danger huh, is that they just tell you, go and start up a business. Aside from your job, do something else. That teaching is very sincere but misleading. If you have received that teaching, I want you to throw it away now and listen to what I'm about to teach you. Because for many people, that's, that's the circumference of your business seminar. Are you getting blessed? So they've told you, together with the job, start something anything just start no sir you will start and fail and fail woefully write this down god's system for activating your streams of income i want to teach you the kingdom system there is a babylonian system of establishing multiple streams of income that ends you in frustration ends you in penury or you will be rich but at the expense of your salvation you will be rich but at the expense of very important things in your life everything that we do we must do it from the perspective of the kingdom and this is where men of god must balance i believe in in reaching out to business and getting a lot of business people and their ideas but please hear me you must be careful not everything taught in the business world should just be lifted and brought to church hook line and sinker many men of god go for a lot of secular business meetings and they teach them a lot of things and they are motivated I've, I've listened to all those people to trust me but you must sustain a kingdom paradigm to be able to edit out the things that are not consistent with the way of the lord because anything that is not founded on the truth of god's word i don't care what it is it will not last or even if it produces result for you it will take something else out of your life it is the blessing of the lord that make it rich and will not add sorrow to it say amen so what is God's system for activating the streams of income? Let's hurry up. Proverbs. Proverbs. The book of Proverbs. Very quickly. Eighteen verse sixteen. Quickly, it's a popular scripture we always talk about, but from here we'll rush so that we'll finish on time. What I'm about to bring before you is a powerful revelation that will change your life. Proverbs eighteen verse sixteen. Let's read on. It says, "A man's gift." Please listen. Please pay attention. A man's gift does what? Does two things. What's number one? it makes room for him is that true what's number two it 
brings him before a man's gift does two things for him it gives him opportunity and it gives him access write it down your gift does two things for you that is very vital in producing finances in your life it gives you opportunities and then it gives you access access entrance before the great a man's gift so how do you identify the streams of income in your life many people have been taught they so they teach you different businesses and they tell you just do this this no 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 there's no guarantee that because they gave you a good business idea you will succeed you see the mistake this is where we mess up and we mislead people a lot write this down you identify the streams in your life by looking at two things number one your gifts and abilities your gifts and abilities are pointers to the kinds of streams that God has granted you access to your gifts and your abilities write it down number two the problems and the opportunities that are in line with your passion the problems and the opportunities that are in line with your passion these are the two scriptural ways of identifying the streams that God puts in your life one your gifts and your abilities two the problems and the opportunities that are in line with your passion not just any problem you know they tell people search for problems there are problems all around Nigeria you go and try a problem that you don't have passion for and that's when you know that problems are not things you just solve overnight it must be in line with your passion passion is the key that sustains you in a place it is passion that puts you back up when you fail anytime you commit yourself to anything you are not passionate about you waste your time you waste energy you waste resources is God helping us write this down every gift and ability you have is a potential stream of income how true every gift and ability in your life is a potential stream of income every gift and every ability you have is a potential stream look at david for instance almost every gift the bible identifies in david later became a stream for him his ability to play right his ability to be faithful in service his leadership skill everything was utilized in his life i'm about to make a statement that is very striking maybe controversial especially for pastors i want you to listen to me do not let men box you into one stream and stop you from exploring other streams don't get into that illusion of making people box you because they identify and they know you as functioning in one stream if you are not careful people can put you in a box they know you as a pastor and you remain a pastor and die a pastor there are other streams crying for expression but the religious environment keeps people down and keeps people poor there's a lot that i want to say here how many times have many pastors with great entrepreneurial potentials with great leadership potentials there are other streams of income that can find expression but they are boxed to the pulpit and left there why because people say you are a pastor and the meaning of that is remain there be poor there and die there this kind of mentality does not longer exist in the 21st century you cannot live in the 21st century with this mindset again or i am a civil servant so when you call people you say those who are civil servants this side and you see a mass of people like bees coming to this side those who are businessmen this side that thing is about to change in the 21st century 
that concept of choosing whether you are a civil servant or choosing whether you are an entrepreneur are you getting my point there must be a weaving of it to survive the vicious financial circle in the 21st century are you getting blessed is god helping you there are many pastors i say this with a particular bias for pastors because we have said pastors are wicked people because pastors have been caught in all kinds of financial scandals in church eating god's money pastors have been found manipulating people and doing all sorts of things and the reason is because they have to respond to the necessary frustration that comes by having a single stream of income now the man is a pastor and is earning twenty thousand with five children right you can imagine what that is that you give a pastor a house and one car does not mean he will not need money again and they themselves have not been educated they have not been taught they lack financial literacy are you getting the point now so the pastor has to necessarily keep preaching messages that will manipulate people into because he the pastor's children must go to school is that not true the pastor must also eat some of you after the service you go to the pastor's house 10 people immediately after after service and all of them deserve to be fed this has brought a lot of problems for people especially those in ministry listen to me every potential you have that god put in you is crying for expression and you should never go back to the lord without giving it expression every gift in you i plan in my life that every gifting and every potential his majesty has deposited in my life will be adequately deployed praise the lord there are so many things that's why many pastors are poor that's why they are broke one of my greatest mentors dr miles munro a man who was able to cut across both the secular and the contemporary society utilized his potentials as a pastor he was the senior pastor and the founder of bahamas faith ministry international and yet at the same time brothers and sisters he was a consultant for 16 presidents how many a consultant an advisor to 16 presidents at the same time he was so notable the bahamian nation had to make him an ambassador imagine that and then at the, at the same time he owned an aircraft company not aircraft they are busy shouting that people are buying jet many of you may not know let me explain it to you what it means it, he he not own one aircraft boeing 737 no 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 he owned a fleet of aircraft the very company that deals in it and yet he was a kingdom man he lived well on earth and is gloriously honored in heaven that's why he was a man of integrity he was not just a man of integrity because he's the, there was absolutely no need why will you steal church money for what how much is the money are you getting the point i tell you the truth not exposing people to the different giftings in their lives to deploy it and then leaving them say it's like you are hungry you fasted for three days and then they make hot food nice food rise up and steaming right and then one drink is in front of you and they say just keep your nose and be staring at it but don't touch it that's the same frustration that happens to a pastor that you live with millions in a church account and he's sitting down and his son he cannot pay thirty thousand. they must be thieves necessarily with time even if they are conviction at you see that don't trivialize what i'm sharing with you that's the reason why many, many pastors cannot be bold in teaching the truth because they have inconvenienced too many people and God is helping us tonight say after me in the name of Jesus I am gifted shout it in the name of Jesus there is a gift upon my life there are graces upon my life there are abilities upon my life and I will deploy every one of them to become a stream of income. Even if God tells me to drop ministry today, I will never be poor for the rest of my life because there are other streams. 
Are you getting me? Before God called me, I was doing something. Is that not true? You see, many of us act as if, oh, God found people lazy. Go and read your Bible. Everybody God called into ministry, he called from. He called them from a standpoint of diligently doing something. Moses was standing his father in law's sheep. Is that true? Every single one. Peter, they were all fishermen. God does not call lazy people. Please don't make it look like being in ministry is a license unto laziness. There are too many things I can do with my life to bring me stream of income. If I'm not a preacher, at least I can speak. Right? There are so many things. There are books to write. I have different thoughts on different areas. I can document my persuasions. There are all kinds of financial and business vehicles to set up. So don't you see a man of God rich and just think it's church money or just think and think are people not dashing their money. You see articles blackmailing men of God all around and saying a man who was poor but now he has, as though he's not supposed to be blessed. People are arguing and complaining about one jet, two jets. My goodness. I don't know what will happen by the time we we'll come. If we need 100 jets, we will buy all of them. I guarantee you. Very unapologetically. See that? You can be rich through the dignity of kingdom integrity. It doesn't have to be by crooks. It doesn't have to be by pranks. And you don't have to be angry at wealthy people. They look like you. You're of equal age, but your mindsets are not the same. Your sacrifices are not the same. Your courage is not at the same level. Hallelujah. Never allow anybody keep you in one position and not allow you to deploy your talents. There are many of us who are seated here. Bishop T.D. Jakes, the, the pastor of Potter's house, right? He wrote one book, Woman Thou Art Loose. Just one book. And that book brought him $4 million. Multiply that by 210 Naira there about. That gives you the equivalent in Naira because he deployed his writing potentials. It became an added stream of income. When people were insulting him for living in a house of 2.1 million, I said, come on, give the man a break. He didn't steal anybody's money. Why will I be worth 10 million, 20 million, 100 million and not live in a house? How much is 1.2? How much is 2 or 3 million compared to 100 million? Don't insult people. If a man buys a car of 20 million, don't insult him and say he's extravagant. Compared to what? You are gauging his success based on your level. Compared to what? You see that? These are some of the poisonous mindsets that have destroyed us. We never forget, we forget the fact that these guys are sick. Their tape ministry, the books that they have written enough will feed them for a lifetime. Just the books. Bishop Oyedeko, for instance, I hear that he does not even collect one naira from his books. And there are at least 60 books he has written. How many of them are bestsellers? Yet we, we, have, we are the first to criticize people and run down men of God and run down people because how much is the peanuts you get from congregations compared to the wisdom. See, the Bible says, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask, not let him criticize those who are working in it. Hallelujah. Ministry for me alone, with all the blessings of ministry, is only one stream of income. There are so many of them in my life that have been developed and others are still being developed. I will never be poor. It's not about being a preacher. It's about realizing that once there is a demand for what I do, and I train myself in the ability to see, to do it. When you are sleeping, the wealthy people are awake studying seminars doing a lot of things right and then we see them rich and we criticize them 
please, I want to say this koinonia from today. Never develop the attitude of criticizing wealthy people again. You will never be like what you resent. Anything you drive away from your life, you can never be like it. Honor is the seed for access. Hallelujah. I'm friends to many, by the grace of God, many wealthy people and many millionaires. I'm not so daft to be around people who are blessed and not ask questions. See that? This is very important. But then let me, let me quickly balance something because there are so many people who will be hearing. Now, I explained to us that there are all kinds of streams of income. Watch this. The trouble I have, especially with men of God, in business and other things, is that they do not know how to draw the line between the different fragments and facets of their lives. Are you seeing that now? When Jesus entered the temple, what did he do? He took a whip and he was flogging those who were doing business in the church. In the church. Jesus showed us that there is a difference. As a man of God, I have my corporate life. I have other dimensions, leadership and all of that. You see that? I cannot come into church and be doing business in the church. No. No, a thousand times no. The moment I do that, I'm taking advantage of the loyalty. Are you getting that? Of the people and using it for my... That's why you never come and hear me talk business in church. No, sir. The Bible says, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. Right? I cannot bring up a product right now and force everybody in Koinonia to buy it. It is my product, but a lot of men of God are doing it. This is where the balance must come in. You cannot use the vast people that God has given you to train and build and then squeeze into them. No, no. There is a difference between different aspects of your life. That's the reason why God fragmented himself into different aspects. You cannot know Rafa by studying Jaira. Jaira is a dimension itself. Rafa is a dimension itself. Sikenu is a dimension itself. Is that true? El Shaddai is a dimension itself. But all of those names belong to one person. I am. So he said, who do men say that I am? And they were calling different dimensions of him. As a, as a man of God, you are dimensional. While it is true that you do not stay on one place, you must know where the boundary lies. Never carry business into church and go and manipulate people. No, it's wrong. Very wrong. If you are here as a man of God and you are doing it, stop. Stop. You must give people an opportunity to make their decisions. They are not daft. Of course, I understand sometimes because of our kindness and generosity. Do you know why I'm telling you this? Because there are some things I may not be able to share here, but see, the business world is a lot different from ministry. In the business world, you must give people room to take responsibility for themselves. As a man of God, you can ruin your church in one moment. Right? I know there was a situation that happened in, in one church down in Abuja. It's, it's one of the popular churches around. Where there were some people who brought some land to sell. And then they brought it to church and they designed one scheme. And members were happy and all of that. And then somehow the people were dishonest. And they swindled the people with the church. The man almost lost his ministry. Because people started saying our pastor is a thief. He connived with people to eat our money. Do not think because members sit down and love you. They love you as a man of God. But you must give them room to build their financial capacities. Don't over pamper people in the name of kindness. They will stab you when they fail. Because the business world is a world that requires its own maturity. Are you getting me? Many people do not have business sense. And you expose them in the name of church to businesses or some things. When things go wrong or it fails, they will kill you. They will write articles about you. They will lock you up as a man of God. And so let people take their responsibilities by themselves. Are you getting what I'm saying? Is God giving us wisdom? This is a mistake a lot of pastors have made. They come to church. 
anybody just comes in and says I'm a lawyer I have some land I am a this I have that and then the pastor comes and announces and because people love the pastor they now run around and come and say this is our pastor this and that and that or they raise money to buy church land you know, all kinds of things please I'm telling us especially for men of God who are here who are upcoming maintain integrity maintain integrity as a man of God define the jurisdiction of your work to the ministry and stay there now there are other platforms you can create like Sunday Adelaja who created a lot of business platforms if you want to do anything that is business in the church set up a committee or a club and let people subscribe to it spell the terms of it and let the people know that they are venturing into this not in the name of the church but at their own risk that way whatever happens the integrity of the church is preserved is God teaching us I told you I struggle to teach you what I'm teaching you because this is what you would teach in a business class that you pay hundreds of thousands but this is giving us wisdom especially for those of us who are leaders don't carry the zeal of business ideas or whatever and come and project on people that they are praying in tongues and they hug you you don't yet know their attitude towards money they will stab you and kill you is God helping us let's continue so your streams of income should be around your giftings should be around your abilities your streams of income now look up I want to teach you something please very important now write this word down time t-i-m-e write this word down time your life on earth is measured in time don't forget this your life on earth is measured in time that means whatever you give your time to you have given part of your life to the time you are giving your employer or your job your office is part of your life you are given to them write this down focus on activating streams that increase your income without eating up your time focus there is only limited time you have everybody has only 24 hours you cannot have 25 hours in a day so if you generate streams of income around your life and all of them require your time and your active participation you will wear your life out and you will be ineffective wealthy people focus on activating streams that increase their income without necessarily eating up their time let me give you an instance if I write a book right now if I write one book right I communicate my thoughts maybe books on there's so many books that I have I'm just waiting for the Lord to release me to begin to write books I know many of them will be bestsellers because I will not just get up and write books I will humble myself and meet those who have produced bestsellers and ask them I have the content but what of the marketing what of the publicity never do a thing until you have consulted with the best of the best you will minimize mistakes you will make instant progress so I can write a book right now for instance and then release it and I can be here preaching and somebody is buying my book in a bookstore doesn't know me has never seen me may never see me right and then income is coming into me millions and millions of income coming because I'm documenting my persuasions and there are many areas I can write on I can write on the anointing I can write on wealth and prosperity I can write on leadership all the areas that I know God has granted me grace in I'm just showing you how one stream now I can be here and be effective in koinonia another thing for instance if I build an estate you see that if I build an estate there are people renting I don't even know them I've never seen them for instance but I'm here teaching the word my time is being invested to the principal thing I've been called to do but there are channels that are bringing me in are you getting what I'm saying now 
very important. If I teach, assuming that we're selling our teachings, imagine the hundreds of millions we would have made by now on just the media ministry. But God instructed us not to do that. The impact is more important than the money. One grateful person can bring what we would have gotten in 10 years and bring in one day. This is the benefit. Every time you dispense value, you must be rewarded. Whether you sell it or you give it free. It's a law. So we are not at a loss at all. Now imagine that today's message, the media department will now package it, the wealthy place, volume 1, volume 2, volume 3, right? And then maybe each of them is sold now. You can imagine that. And all of that is happening. So people are buying it somewhere, whereas you are still here. As much as possible, value your time. Your time is premium. You must know that. You cannot give away your time unnecessarily for everything. It's too much to give your life just for money. No. Let wisdom minimize the dispensing of your time so that you will spend that time on the things that matter in life. I hate seeing people spending all their time chasing after money. You should chase after God. Chase after God. Seek ye first the kingdom and seek ye to align yourself to the principles of the kingdom. That's what is meant by his righteousness here. Yeah. And he said all other things will be added. Let's hurry up. When you give your time, you give your life. Never forget that. The reason why they pay you salary is because you are exchanging two things for that salary. Number one, you are exchanging your gift or your potential or your, your skill. Number two, you are exchanging your time. These are the two things that go for your salary. You cannot afford to do this for the rest of your life. Because you're 24 hours. If you spend one third or two third of that 24 hours investing in somebody's project and his assignment, how much do you have left for yourself? And for the advancement of the kingdom. Imagine that I cannot come for Koinonia now. And say because I'm trying to do something there. I'm looking for money somewhere. It's terrible. I'm failing in my assignment. It doesn't matter how much money I make. So you have to be careful. So that you don't just. That's the language of those we call hustlers. Hustlers are those who are ready to commit their time to anything that will give them money. Right? They have, their time is valueless to them. So they can give it away just for anything. My time is precious to me because my life is measured in time. God gives me the gift of 24 hours every day and I focus on doing the things that are consistent with my vision and my assignment. And while it is true that I want to activate streams of income, it will not be at the detriment of my assignment. And so you must structure your life in such a manner that you can activate multiple streams of income and then at the same time conserve your time as much as possible praise the lord write this down there is a, an equation for financial freedom financial freedom is equal to financial abundance plus time plus peace of mind that you have money does not mean you are financially free financial freedom is equal to financial abundance the availability of the resources plus time there are people who have money but no time no time to pray no time to build no time to spend a quality time with their children and their loved ones and their families no time at all they tell you no time i'm busy i'm busy i'm busy they started doing that when they were 20 now they are 55 i'm busy i'm busy and then they die because on the seventh day god rested you you are in the ninth day you have not rested you will die Hallelujah. Let me tell you the reason why it's so easy to be rich in the 21st century. In the school of prosperity, especially in the 21st century, almost any and everything has a demand. There is a demand for almost any and everything. This is the reason why there should be no one here seated under the sound of my voice that in the next three years in the next five years should be poor impossible there is a demand for just any and everything the world is a global village there is a demand for just anything see 
right now even people's laugh has brought them millions somebody just laughs is it not your ringtone oh yes somebody just laughs around and does everything that side a does another one that side b you see that and you put it as your ringtone and you go and download it and you do a lot of things anything at all anything a lady because she has nice fingers will make millions because she will market the ring of a jewelry company they just keep putting rings on her hand for every ring hundred thousand dollars can you imagine just for having a nice finger there is a demand for anything so you have been playing with that your hand could it be that that's the rod of God just for being fine you can wipe poverty away from your life forever right just for being not fine you can still wipe poverty away from your life because you can be used in both ways it depends on the message that is being communicated um, I'm just I'm speaking generally there is a demand for everything absolutely everything no matter how little the skill is there is a demand for it look at how pastors you may sit down and think that there are already too many pastors allow the glory of God to come upon your life and see how many people will scrounge scrounge after that from today till Wednesday non-stop I have ministrations every day I have a meeting morning and evening you will think there are already enough pastors no no there are 7.2 billion people right you think there are an, enough people selling pure water or whatever it's because you do not know how many people are on earth when you know there is a demand for anything and I told you the formula once there is a demand there is money for it you go and meet somebody and say borrow me 10 naira he will tell you I cannot but sell something he will pay you for it in the 21st century brothers and sisters you are only limited by your creativity you are only limited by your creativity. Ah! There is a mighty financial army that will rise. Even if you don't pay attention to this, I know that there are millions of people who will take this message and will run with it. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. They will break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Write one word down. We're almost done. Creativity. Please write it. This is an important key in the school of prosperity. Creativity. What does it mean to be creative? Creativity is the ability to birth new or improved ideas. Oh, this is key to your life. The ability to birth new or improved ideas. If you lack this one ability, you will never be rich. Because that's the key to being different. That's the key to being unique. It's not just what you do. It's the uniqueness in it. And the key to being unique is hidden in one word. Creativity. The first revelation of God in the Bible was not as a savior. It was as a creator. And he created us in that image. Creativity. What we were born to do. Anyone who has a mind has the capacity to be creative. Your destiny is at the mercy of your creativity. This gentleman can produce this. 30 minutes of deep, intense worship just with instruments. And he will pray and fast and train himself and just package something like this. He can call it anything. The dew of heaven, part one. Millions of these copies will be sold because people will put it in their phones can have a contract with most of the 
the, 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 the people, iPhones and, and iTunes and all of these people, and they can put it, they can even put it by default in many gadgets. And it's blessing people. Millions of people are buying it. And this guy is getting blessed because there is a demand for everything. That's why Don Wen will never be poor. I know you gave your life to Christ at his song, but he became rich because you bought the thing. Yes, he never sleeps, he never slumbers, but you bought it. Or at least it was given to you. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. They will break every chain. 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 Creativity is the key to effectively creating a demand for your gifts or your potentials. The reason why nobody has placed a demand on your gift is because you have not added creativity to it. The reason why your shop looks like that of every other person is because you are not creative about it. Let me tell you, in the world of prosperity, you lose by becoming like every other person. Your uniqueness is what stands you out. Your competitive advantage. There is what you get in Koinonia that you will never get anywhere. It cannot be cloned. There is what you get from my life that you cannot get anywhere. There is what I should get from your life that I cannot get anywhere. This is your key to prosperity. Men will never come to you if there is an alternative to you. They will come to you to the degree to which you are uncommon and unique. I hear the chains of him falling I hear the chains falling. I will give you four streams of income that can help you. That's, that's all we'll touch for this. Um, there are at least eight. I call them recession-proof streams of income. They are all in the Bible. But I'll give only four here. School of Ministry students will add two more. And then that's about it. Any other one? has to be in a business or a corporate platform. Ready? Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 2. If we can get NIV, please give us NIV quickly. I hear the chains. Can we get NIV? Okay, fine. Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 2. Please, let's save time. Will you break every chain? Break every chain. It says, Give portions to seven, yea, to eight, for you do not know what disaster may come upon the land. Right? What other version do I have? It says, It says, I, I can't remember the version now, not, not amplified. It says, invest in seven places, yea, in eight. Um, what was that version? I don't know. One of these new versions. For you do not know what disaster may come upon the land. In other words, scatter your streams. Right? That concept of lay your egg in one basket is nonsense. Throw away that theology. Poor people said that. That's why they are poor. When the basket falls, what do you do? You die with it there. Listen. Thank you. God bless you. NLT. It says, but divide your investments among many places. For you do not know what risks might light ahead. I hear the chains. I love the Bible. Hey, yeah. mm. Number one. Land. Land. Everybody write it down land open bracket 
land and anything you can get under it on it and above it it's all called land you know it as real estate land together with anything under it on it and above it look at me you are not rich if you do not own land are you hearing what i'm saying write it so that you don't forget i don't care what else you are you are poor if you do not own land because land is a fixed asset it cannot be stolen even if a bomb falls on that land it can only affect what is on it you will not see a big hole suddenly looking at you land is one of the greatest communications of God's justice and mercy upon the inhabitants of the earth I'll stop there land two education I'm giving you four fail proof streams of income under education write the following anything whether speaking writing or setting up structures that transfer knowledge education is all about imparting knowledge the bible gives us a clue into becoming rich he said before the coming of christ knowledge shall increase there will be an unsearchable demand for knowledge that means anything you do that will transfer knowledge to people is a guaranteed source of wealth. There's nothing to hide. There's no secret about it. There's no secret there in the first place. Education. Speaking. How many people rake in millions of dollars every week just because they are able to communicate. They are not just talking. They are transferring knowledge. Imagine that this was a business meeting and everybody is paying 100,000 for the seminar. Calculate how many people. 100,000 times all the people we have, including all those who are online. And I'm doing the same thing. I don't need to talk louder. I don't need to shout more. The exact same thing. 10 years after I have preached this, or I have said this, or I have delivered this lecture, I will still be getting paid for education one of the cheapest aspect of education is writing the ability to document your persuasion for as long as you think there is something you want the world to hear you can document it the only problem is what many people call book writing is nonsense they are just hungry people looking for money so there is no excellence and no creativity and at the end of it only hundred copies are sold and the bookstore tells you please get out but there is a key purpose driven life right rick warren that one book brought tens and hundreds of millions of dollars it was so profound they had to create a workbook for it love and respect there are many books that have become bestsellers rediscovering the kingdom because individuals documented strong persuasions that rattled the ideologies of continents could there be a persuasion in your life right now that you need to birth and bring out you are sitting upon a gold mine and yet you are crying crying for food and crying for water the only limitation to your life should be the voice of God not lack of creativity it's God speaking to us. Education. Number three. Your job. Your job. Paid employment. It's a stream of income. So your job is not bad. You can get a job. At least you receive salary from it. And the beautiful part of that is that your salary can solve your short-term needs. Because you know every month a fixed income is coming. So it can give you room to focus on other things that will take time to build. How many have I given? Uh, let's stop at the last one. Transportation. The only reason why oil and gas is useful is because there are human beings that need to move around. 
we love oil and gas but we hate transportation how unwise i know that the resources are also used for a lot of things but did you know that for as long as there are human beings on earth there must be movement you studied something that was a clue to your prosperity but you forgot remember what we i think it was in biology social studies mr niger huh? biology mr niger movement as part of the quality of living things is that not true that was the key to your wealth that you have been neglecting every day immediately after koinonia now listen every week i don't know how okay i have an idea you cannot imagine how much is given to the transport companies that transport people without fail every week is that not true transportation if they were your bosses it would have been your money are you getting what I'm saying? How many people have had 300,000, 400,000 and then they used it to buy two phones? Foolish person. Whereas the phone is not bringing you anything. There are sometimes in that big phone only 300 naira will be there. And you can't make any call. You cannot even browse. Whereas you would have been able to buy even if it was a small golf. These are the kinds of businesses that you don't even need to know how to drive. right the the, the 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 driver that carries me around he started driving me three years ago and within that three years he has bought two extra cars two extra cars and i tell you a large percentage of that was for my money think about that they are always happy they you never see them frowning they are smiling because every time he sees me he sees his destiny and for as long as I need his services, I will keep paying for it. How many of you are sitting on millions, hundreds of thousands, roaming around, whereas, or trying to get rooms and apartments to prove a point that does not have to be proved? You want to show people, now you live in a three-bedroom flat that is empty, with one small mattress in one of the rooms, and people think you are a big boy. You are not big, you are small. Whereas something would have been bringing you income. Let me tell you something. The transport sector is a mysterious sector people have never studied. It's a sector that starts bringing you money instantly. From the first day the car goes out, by evening money is coming. 5 a.m. in the morning, brothers and sisters, there are people who get up begging. Whether it is town service, whether it is wherever. I know someone who bought kekenapem right he just bought one i think second year or something like that and then when he bought that kekenapem i think about 12 12 000 comes in every week Twelve thousand. he just went and registered it with the association national union those their union and then he's around praising the lord and giving tight every week and you are saying this guy is he a thief or no 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 do you have to be smart to do that not necessary you just have to be poor. And that's why I told you, there is no reason, brothers and sisters, for people to be poor. What's wrong with five people coming together? You all have 50, 50,000. Have a very well-defined term. You don't need to wait till you have one million. What's wrong with three or four people coming together? All of them having 100,000. And you buy a golf. In four, five months, you are broken even. And you can buy another one. And then buy another one. While that is happening, you are busy increasing your financial intelligence. How much have you spent from January to this year to, to now? Some of you millions. Look at how many of our parents are sitting down and getting angry at people. How many times did they pay them arrears of millions? What did they do with it? They went to a club and called friends and blew the money. They blew one golf away in one night to prove that their arrears has arrived. And yet we keep blaming God. But tonight God is giving somebody intelligence. You don't need to register any company. You don't need to know anybody. With an average car or an average golf, at least 3,000 is coming for you every day. This is the minimum. In seven days, it's 21,000 for doing nothing. You don't need to go to school. You don't need to know anybody. But there are many people sitting on you. And when you see blessed people, you think they are arrogant. They are not. They are not. The income that comes to your hand 
is in direct proportion to the demand demand the transport sector there are many people dreaming i will go into oil and gas i will go into oil and gas how much do you know it takes to start oil and gas you want to be a thief can't you start gradually how many people are sitting on five million ten million that are waiting to buy oil blocks of billions you have eaten your own prosperity by yourself how many people have started popcorn popcorn inside abu is that not true popcorn i'll never forget years ago when one of i think that was in 2006 or 7 i wanted to start one popcorn machine popcorn business in new Bamadi, and i wanted somebody to manage for me so i needed to i sent him to go and do a research for me on everything i was surprised when the, the owner of the popcorn said he makes five thousand naira every day every day you are eating you bought it 30 naira but many just like you are paying for it and he said during orientation and uh, uh, what do we call it graduation matric it can skyrocket to as much as 15,000 20,000 there is no single ice cream machine in Zaria not that all those ones that uh, they, they put the thing as if it's down I'm talking of real a standard look at this there are many of you sitting down what's wrong with 10 people who come in with creativity about 250,000 will buy that thing and go and open up something I guarantee you in one month you will make your money back that's how desperate it is um, I like ice cream like what there's a place in Abuja every time they see me they're happy because they, my money will finish there I can't make it so I must pay for it whatever you cannot do for yourself be sure to pay for it if you ever get it free someone paid for it who is God speaking to tonight I'm showing you streams I'm a student I'm young very soon you will find out that the difference between you and graduation is one example just one and you come out and say it's a lie if you say get out of here you are finished go 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 why should you be poor when there is such a demand a de there are look let me tell you something if you have 20 20 of any of the things i mentioned there will still not be enough demand how many saloons are in Italy? There are about 40,000 students. 40,000 students or more. And about 60% of those people are ladies. Count the number of saloons you have in your campus. Are they up to 10? I doubt if they are up to 10. Servicing at least 10 or 20,000 people. If you have 1,000 more of those things, it will still not be enough. yet we criticize those who are producing because we have been we have been wired to consume that's all we do those who produce are the ones who are working. many of us are are going into food question if we don't buy the food why don't you get into businesses that do not need refrigeration and all of these things i, I don't know about you but i don't like things that give me heart attack you see that that's why I hate businesses that have to do with many people. One person's fight with his wife will affect my diligence. I don't like that. I like to be responsible. I like to be responsible for my, my diligence or otherwise. I can't let another person's carelessness cancel everything I've done. No. If I do well, let me be commended. If I do bad, that's why all those kind of things, shipping vegetable from here to Port Harcourt, I won't get into those kind of things. You can do that, but no way. So if the man is drunk on the way, I suffer because of his drunkenness. I don't like those kinds of business. This is me personally. You have been sitting on a gold mine wishing that things will change. But God is speaking to you. Especially for those of us who are working. You are earning your 50, 50,000. Why don't you close your eyes and be determined that for the next six months you are going to save let me tell you something write it down never borrow money as much as possible or don't borrow money as much as much as possible this is a difficult thing i know i'm human trust me it's a very difficult thing but i want you to make a vow today with your life that as much as god grants you the grace 
you will never borrow money. The borrower is slave to the lender. Say it after me. Borrowing will put you in slavery forever. You can be addicted to borrowing. Borrowing is like drugs. Because it comes easy. When you borrow five naira, you will borrow 100,000. You will borrow five million until you find out that you are in debt of 500 million and you cannot know where it came from because of borrowing. A borrower. Some of you, as you are sitting down right now, not just from anything, maybe business failure or whatever, your own personal debt that you have eaten, everything you are wearing and the room you are staying off key, you borrowed money for it. You are smiling, but there is a pile of debt that is growing and you are borrowing to keep servicing it. You will be a slave forever. It is one of the Babylonian system. That's why you notice I never talked about borrowing. I'm sorry, I know that this insults a lot of your business, people, but I don't believe it. In business, we teach that there's good debt and there's bad debt. You use good debt as a leverage. You use bad debt for consumption. No debt is the kingdom's way. No debt. Say it. Shout it again. After hearing all that I've told you today, you can choose to be emotional about what I've said and get up and return back like someone returning back to his vomit. Or you can make up your mind and say, this is it. I've come to the end of myself. Lord, I'm ready to begin to take decisions. Listen, the key to producing anything in life is to adjust. The most predictable thing in life is change. Change is the most predictable thing. Whether you participate in it or not, it must happen. There are two kinds of people. There are victims of change and there are initiators of change. Whether or not you want things to change, it must change. Listen, a time will come all your friends will rise and leave you if you don't change. You will either be a victim of the change or a benefactor and an initiator. In Nigeria, many people are the recipients of change. The wealthy people are the initiators of it. I choose to be in that category. I refuse to just be a benefactor of change or just a, a, a victim. Whatever happens, I write it. No, sir. We are going to pray. Rise up on your feet. Psalm 66, please. Psalm 66, verse 12. Psalm 66, verse 12. Media, can you help us, please? Psalm 66. Please, everybody, rise. This is a very serious moment right now. It's a defining moment for many of us. Everyone read. One, two, read. It says we went through fire we went through water we went through times of hardship and turbulence but by your wisdom you have brought us into a wealthy place i announce to you koinonia there is a place called the wealthy place there is a place it's a place of plenty it's a land of abundance and it is absolutely left to you i read you a scripture that the profit of the earth is for all. Take over, take over. I have come to the end of myself. Take over, take over. I have touched the end of myself. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I have come to the end of myself. Hallelujah, hallelujah, I have come to the end of Sing it from your heart. Take over, take over, I have come to the end of myself. Take over, I have touched the end of myself. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I have come to the end of myself. Hallelujah. 
I still remember it as clear as yesterday. The night, 2004, lying down in my room at Area BZ, I remember getting up and making a vow. I said, Lord, this is it. If this is what it takes to be blessed, then I insist that I must be blessed. I read Miles Munro's books discovering your potential just that one book please hear me and I made a vow I told myself I know that it will not happen overnight but no matter how slow I am willing to pay the price I told myself even if I have to leap into the wealthy place I'm going there I made up my mind I said I'm tired I made up my mind that my children will never get up to see a cruel and wicked father because of prosperity. I made up my mind that I will never teach error in ministry because I'm looking for money. I made up my mind that I will never soil my hands into witchcraft or anything, the, the kind of money that will take me to hell. No. And for me to live in integrity, I knew that I would pay the price. I cry to the God of Israel. I remember it as clear as I'm looking at you. Tears were running down my eyes. And I said, oh God, I pray that you will help me. I pray that you will do something remarkable in my life. I continued like that, but nothing really happened. Watch this. We're about to round up. I want to challenge you. 2007 was when I signed out of poverty forever. Experientially, never to return there. Haven't done everything I did. I remember it was a Christ Embassy Church in Port Harcourt. That night, it was Reverend Owase, Evangelist Owase. And they had challenged people to sow and to do a lot of things. And I went that night. I will never forget. I had just a bag, my one bag that they gave me, and recharge card, a rechargeable lantern, sorry. I carried everything and I zipped the bag and I laid my hands. I prayed with tears coming out of my eyes for three hours, non-stop in tongues. I said, Lord, enough is enough. I'm tired of this situation. Listen, for as long as you keep massaging poverty in your life, I promise you it will never leave you. It takes aggression, the fatness of your neck to break that chain and that yoke. That's what I did. I carried that bag and I was on my way. I went to the church. There was an overflow, so I sat down outside. And while I sat down outside, when it was time to sow, people were sowing television, signing checks of millions. I didn't have all of that, but I was determined to break out of poverty. Watch this. I wanted to move and the Holy Spirit told me to stay back. Look at this embarrassment. After everybody had given, then the Holy Spirit told me you can now go. In a very seemingly disgraceful and embarrassing way, I carried my back. That was my Isaac, truly from the depth of my heart, home and abroad. As I dragged it to the altar, it wasn't to give the usher and say, please, I'm embarrassed. Help me drop it there. There were beautiful ladies in that church. But I said, none of you gave me money. I'm determined to break out of this poverty. When you are determined, all these side distractions that carelessness here and there brings, you set your face like a flint. And I went there. When I went, I dropped it on the altar. Some people were laughing at me, of course, because the bag was not looking like something, I'm sure they would just send it to one over. But that was my eyes. Listen. And I returned back to my seat outside. I stood there and it was as if somebody was piercing my heart with a knife a thousand times. And while I stayed there, the Holy Ghost spoke to me. And he said, son, from this day, you have entered wealth. That's what the Holy Spirit said. He said, from this day, 
you have entered well i will never forget the next day 6 20, 6 10 on the dot in the morning somebody calls me shaking and says are you joshua selman i say yes i say who are you he said i don't know you but the holy spirit instructed me to sow a seed into your life please i need your account number i said what in the world is this a few days later the chairman board of trustee of this ministry he's a general now he called me and i think he transferred how much was it four hundred thousand or something into my account no no no. he first gave me one hundred and fifty thousand. he said the lord led me to tell me that you should buy a laptop and also buy a camera they were doing a pro within a span of about one week having prepared myself the door started opening mysteriously in less than four to five months i made my first million i will never forget how it felt that day not borrow not father's money not uncle and auntie not our money i just stood there and i said there is a wealthy place time will never change anything decisions do i'm going to challenge everyone to sow a seed if you don't believe in what i'm saying please stop we're rounding up the lord led me to do this i'm going to challenge everybody i want you to sow a seed it's very important i can help you it's not about money. You know that we are people of integrity here. But I want to challenge you to sow a seed. Even if it's not something you can do now. But I want to challenge you. Something that you will connect with and say, Lord, I'm tired. Please, if you don't believe it, you don't need to argue. Just, just remain where you are. But I have seen. This is the correct context in which sowing of seed comes into place. Not just telling people, sow, sow, sow. No, 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 no. When you guide them and this foundation is there, then you will sow. There is a minimum offering. There is a minimum amount. I can never give God less than that for the rest of my life. I will be a wicked person. No! I put a benchmark, not in the house of God again. I want to pray for you from the depth of my heart. We have called it the year of the rain. I don't want to fool you. We are not native doctors. There is a law. Please, I want you to package a seed and lift it up. Take over. Take over. We have come to the end of ourselves. Take over. Take over. We have touched the end of ourselves. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have come to the end of ourselves. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One more time, just one time. Hey, take over. Take over. I have come to the end of myself. Hallelujah. While I was preparing for this meeting, I was about to give and I said, when the Lord told me, I said, Lord, how much do I give? When the Lord mentioned the amount, I said, wow, serious. What if it is for you? There is no amount. No amount. Because I will be a fool. I remember where God took me from. You have heard people say it outside. Now you are seeing somebody who is a testimony of it. It works. It's not just Mike Modoc saying it. It's not just Bishop Oyedeko. God is no respecter of persons. You are going to pray on this seed and say, Lord, let this be the seed that will open up creativity. Go ahead and pray. Please pray. Lift your voice. We are out of time. Prove me now here with say the Lord if I will not open unto you the windows of heaven and give you ideas 
concepts creativity Please pray. Isaiah 45, please quickly. Isaiah 45, verse 2 and 3. Media, give us quickly. And then after that, we'll look at 48, verse 17. Please, please, please hurry up. Isaiah 45, verse 2 and 3. And then 48. Verse 17, Isaiah 45. I found this scripture in 2005 and it changed my life. One to read. I will go before thee and make the crooked places straight. Read on. And cut in sunder the bars of iron. Verse 3. Never forget this. And I will give you the treasures of darkness. The hidden riches of secret places. That I'm, you may know that I, the Lord, which calleth thee by name, I am the God of Israel. 48 verse 17. He says, I will give you the treasures. There are treasures in dark places. Hagar was in a place where there was water. But she thought she was in a wilderness. When the angel appeared, suddenly she saw the water. It takes this seed is the seed that will open you up to opportunities and open you up to all kinds of things. Read verse 17, everybody. One to read. I am the Lord thy God, which teacheth thee to profit. I can lead you to the business. I can connect you to the people. I can show you what financial vehicle can turn around your life. Lift your voice and pray in one minute. Lord, with this seed, turn around my captivity. Are you praying, Koinonia? Like the streams of the naked. I am the Lord that teacheth thee. God can teach you to profit. God can teach you to profit. God can show you when many people are looking you can see the treasures of darkness the gold mine that you have been sitting on ask the Lord to open your eyes through this sea is the year of the rain 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 lord i'm tired of this financial level i'm tired of this dimension with this sea i ask for an outpouring of creativity an outpouring of insight Show me what I need to do to take that business to the next level. Show me the streams of income that I need to put my hand upon. And by favor, bring me resources, bring me people, bring me opportunities. They know not, neither will they understand. They grow in darkness and the earth is out of course. Have I not said, ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. But you shall die like men, men and fall like one of these princes. Hallelujah. Lift up your seed above your head as I pray for you. Father, we mean business with our financial destinies. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, these seeds that are lifted, cursed be me and my generation if I've misled your people and if I've deceived them. 
But Lord, if what I have taught your people is the truth of God's word, I pray that there be a performance. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, in a mysterious way, beginning from the month of July, open people up to mysterious dimensions of wealth. In the name of Jesus Christ, for some of you, God will connect you to business ideas. For some of you, you will rise up like giants and begin to activate streams of income. And you will never have to beg another day in your life again. Father, I pray that as a result of this seed, may there be an anointing that will move them into putting to use what they have learned. Every spirit of complacency, every spirit that renders the word of God of non-effect, I command that spirit to live your life right now. With this seed, I command business ideas to multiply in your mind. Some of you, before this service is over, God begins to drop strategies on how to begin to set up structures, value-adding structures, in the name of Jesus Christ. With this seed, we cause poverty to its root in the name of Jesus. We cause poverty to its root in the name of Jesus. Lord, let there be abundance in this house. May this place become the wealthy place. A place of abundance in the name of Jesus Christ. In one minute, just cast your seed as you pray in tongues. Very quickly, ushers, let's do that in one minute. Cast your seed very quickly and pray in tongues. Pray. My story is changing, oh God. God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. Pray in tongues quickly in one minute. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Those worshiping with us for the first time, please make your way out while I speak to the house. If we are worshiping with us for the first time, just keep coming out while the rest of us lift our hands. Please, very quickly. Those worshiping with us for the first time, inside and outside, make your way out here and the rest of us lift your hands. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy upon your life that tonight, in your sleep and in visions, and in dreams may creative ideas be released to you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ I pray for you from the depth of my heart that the resources to begin to activate the streams of income as much as you need receive it right now in the name of Jesus where you have been stagnated and confused on account of your sowing in the name of Jesus, I pray for you. This night, that chain of stagnation is broken. For those of you who have sowed this seed for your families, I pray that the same way God is changing your story, may he change your stories in the name of Jesus. For many of you, between now and miracle service, you will come and testify of new financial strength. Multiplied favor. In the name of Jesus, may God give you grace to be men and women of integrity. In the name of Jesus, I pray for destiny helpers. May God send destiny helpers to help you set up the relevant businesses and to take your ideas from dreams to fruition in the name of Jesus. Your hands are blessed, blessed with an anointing to prosper. Where you have failed, go back again. And my God will lift you and honor you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Those who have laughed at you very soon, they will begin to laugh with you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for courage for you. In the name of Jesus. It takes audacity to begin to take bold steps. Receive the grace to take bold steps. No more waiting. No more waiting. I kill the spirit of procrastination beginning from tonight I challenge you no more waiting no more waiting it's time to arise it's time to shine and it's time to break forth 
in the name of Jesus lift your hands and give God praise hallelujah those of you worshiping with us for the first time thank you so much um, this is our financial series the wealthy place thank you very much for coming this is koinonia a meeting put together by eternity network international thank you so 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 much for coming and for all those who invited them thank you so much for this sacrifice we're here every um, every Friday and we invite you to be part of us next week again as we have another dimension of God's word we want to pray for you your life will never be the same stretch your hands saints of God and let's speak over their lives prophesy you're on your way to better days that's our prophecy to you for coming here we are praying that the heavens are open over you that the ideas that you have received the insight the change the mental revolution will change your life forever we bless you with hunger for god we bless you with insight into scripture and we pray that your financial destinies will turn around forever in the name of the lord jesus christ i pray amen and amen thank you so much i'd like you to just um follow the gentleman waving his hands they'll welcome you more warmly on our behalf and then they'll have your details and you'll be back to your seat god bless you celebrate them coin on here this way just follow the gentleman this way thank you so much for coming hello beloved in christ we hope this message was a blessing to you i would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us too tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching